Hi, I'm Ginger Z. What if I told you that the government could put a freeway in your backyard and you wouldn't have much of a say in the matter, even if it could pollute your land or groundwater? Seems wrong, right? Well, there is a 50-year-old law that makes that illegal, but that law is being changed, and that's why I'm sitting here with you today. I'm Chief Meteorologist here at ABC News. And that haze and smoke so thick. I'm getting pounded by the mist here. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning to all of you. I make a living forecasting the weather. We're talking more than a foot in parts of North Dakota, but it's a good thing I don't forecast headlines, because if you would have asked me back in January what the biggest story of 2020 would be, I would have made one of the worst predictions ever. I was certain that climate and environment would top the news. But we all know what happened. The start of another week in the coronavirus pandemic. Self-quarantine for 14 days. Massive protests continue in many parts of the nation. While COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, and police reform are rightfully taking center stage, our climate and environmental emergencies didn't go away. And since I'm a scientist and a journalist, I feel responsible to make sure that we don't lose sight of the planet's health while we watch our own. That's why we wanted to start this segment. It's not too late, because it really isn't. Each week, I wanna take you through the climate and environmental headlines that you might've missed, and then focus in on one that you need to know more about. So, let's get to it. May 2020 tied for the hottest May in 141 years of record around the globe. All that red right behind me. That is 1.71 degrees Fahrenheit above average. What's even more impressive, May was also the 425th consecutive month above average. That's a 35 year streak in case you were doing the division. And if you don't care about that, well, let this next one sink in. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, that gas that traps the sun's heat and helps warm our Earth, it reached the highest level in 800,000 years. That's the highest mark since humans have been on this planet. And that's with the pause of industry and travel thanks to COVID-19. We still did it. We just kept on rising. But wait, there's more. And it's something that you might not have heard much about, but you really, really should. On June 4th, President Trump signed an executive order to roll back NEPA. Not familiar? NEPA stands for the National Environmental Policy Act. It's the law that requires federal agencies to assess how their project might impact the environment and the people that live there. It's been around since President Nixon signed it into law in 1970. Many of us just take it for granted. It's the predecessor to the CEQ, the EPA, the everything that protects our air, water, and land. Mustafa Santiago Ali worked for the EPA for a couple dozen years, so I'm gonna let him fill you in. You have to remember what was happening when NEPA was actually put together. You had the Cuyahoga River catching on fire, and you had this incredible amount of smog uh, and other air pollution that was blocking out the sun. So folks knew that there were these foundational elements that we needed to have in law to finally begin to have a comprehensive plan to protect folks. Or you can just go to the CEQ's website on NEPA, and they even boast NEPA is the Magna Carta of environmental law. And if you go back to why NEPA started, most roads are going to take you to, well, roads that were never built. In the late 1960s, as the Great White Flight was taking place out of cities and to the suburbs, the government started a plan for highway projects. Many of them went right through black and brown neighborhoods. This is in the time where the Black Panthers were joining forces with the Sierra Club. It was a time where civil rights was meeting environmental rights. And since then, NEPA has had some pretty important success stories. Like in 2007, when the California Department of Food and Agriculture was spraying toxic chemicals on schools, playgrounds, and neighborhoods. And then NEPA came in to help regulate that so that the people that were being sprayed could say, hey, please don't spray us anymore. NEPA also saved money and endangered species along with people's homes in Atlanta when a big highway project was proposed. They find alternatives. President Trump and his administration say that NEPA is slowing us down. From day one, my administration has made fixing this regulatory nightmare a top priority. On June 4th, the president signed an executive order to waive NEPA during the pandemic. That means that agencies can bypass NEPA's laws to boost the economy immediately. Champions of the environment and of 
People are extremely concerned because a key part of NEPA is making the public aware. And they say that in this arrangement, they don't have to let us know what's going on. So the freeway could potentially be starting with no public comment or restrictions on the public comment, and we wouldn't even know. That's just during the pandemic emergency, right? You know, what's going on parallel to this executive order is also the rulemaking. Um, and there, this, the rulemaking is a much bigger deal because this is actually the formal process to permanently change NEPA, not just for COVID-19, but for the rest of forever. Yep, the rest of forever. Any day now, the administration is set to modernize NEPA. Dozens of agencies agree that NEPA needs to change. They're behind them. And it includes the American Gas Association, the National Miners Association, some loggers, the Wind Energy Association, and even the American Sheep Industry Association. Yep, that's a thing. Why does NEPA need to be modernized? If we as a nation want to be prepared to meet the challenge of the climate uh, and to, uh, to build a, a, an economy for the future, We've got to have a permitting process that allows us to do that. There's simply no reason right now to have a system that takes more than seven years to even get a yes or no answer on whether you can build a new or improved highway. And some projects do take decades to approve. But according to the congressional research reports that we read, those delays are not because of NEPA. In March, the proposed changes to NEPA garnered 1.1 million comments, and many of them were not happy. They were frustrated that the new set of rules didn't just modernize NEPA, but weakened it. For example, one of the most egregious things the rule does is prohibits any consideration of climate change um, very expressly. It says that agencies should not look at the climate impacts of their projects. My understanding within the rules uh, set back in March or proposed in March is that one of them says that climate change should not be one of the elements that we look at for an environmental um, assessment. Well, it doesn't say it that directly. It's a matter of you know, how it looks at cumulative uh, uh, you know, Im impacts. But again, I think what's important to note is that nothing in this changes the underlying statutes and the, the regulations that, that projects would have to meet under the Clean Air Act. This is about the process of being able to get the federal government permitting uh, you know, mechanisms in a, in a much clearer place so that we can move forward on all of these projects. Marty Durbin is the president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Global Energy Institute, and they all say that streamlining NEPA is long overdue. It'll help land management and protect us from wildfires. It'll get energy projects started, both pipeline and solar and wind, or else we're just not going to be able to grow the economy at an acceptable rate. And what I would say to them is that since we first had the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act and NEPA and all the preceding acts over the years, the economy has continued to grow in leaps and bounds. And at the same time, we were able to lower impacts that are happening inside of communities and begin also to address some of the impacts that are happening from climate change. So what can we do? You can go check out the changes that were proposed to NEPA. There's even a PowerPoint that'll lead you through all the points. I really didn't even have time to get into half of it here. I'm Ginger Z, and I promise it's not too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.